From Pacifica, this is Democracy Now! Gracias a ustedes. Thanks to you, I was able to return to the land that witnessed my birth. Gracias a su lucha. Gracias a su Thanks to your fight. Thanks to your effort, comrade. Thanks to your demands. Thank you. Gracias. The return of Manuel Zelaya, the ousted president of Honduras, does it mean the return of democracy? Today, a Democracy Now! U.S. broadcast exclusive, we take you on Zelaya's plane home after almost two years in exile. We sit down with the president at his home in Tegucigalpa. He talks about why he believes the U.S. was behind the coup and what exactly happened on June 28, 2009, when hooded Honduran soldiers kidnapped him at gunpoint and put him on a plane to Costa Rica, stopping to refuel at Palmarola, the U.S military base in Honduras. All that and more coming up. Welcome to Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. Germany's announced plans to close its 17 nuclear power plants by 2022 following the Fukushima nuclear disaster in Japan. Chancellor Angela Merkel described the move as a revolution in energy supply. Step by step, we will abandon nuclear energy by the end of 2022. This path is a big challenge for Germany, but it also means huge opportunities for future generations. We believe that our country can become a front runner for the creation of renewable energy. And as the first large industrial nation, we can create such a change towards high efficient and renewable energies with all its opportunities for exports, developments and technology which create jobs. Chancellor Merkel announced the nuclear phase-out two days after an estimated 100,000 anti-nuclear protesters gathered in 20 German cities. Afghan President Hamid Karzai has warned NATO forces to stop attacking Afghan homes after 12 children and two women were killed in a NATO airstrike Sunday. Karzai said NATO forces are on the verge of being considered occupiers rather than allies because of the increasing number of airstrikes and house raids. We must clearly uh, demonstrate our understanding that Afghanistan is an ally, not an occupied country. And our treatment with NATO is from the point of view of an ally. If it turns to the other, to the behavior of an occupation, then of course the Afghan people know how to deal with that. In news from Latin America, ousted Honduran President Manuel Zelaya has returned home after nearly two years in exile. In June 2009, he was deposed in the first military coup in Central America in a quarter century. After headlines, we bring you a Democracy Now! Hour exclusive. We spend the hour on Honduras, on the plane with Zelaya, and a wide-ranging interview with the ousted president. The United Nations is reporting more than 50 demonstrators have been killed in the southern Yemeni city of Taez since Sunday, when government forces violently attacked a peaceful sit-in. Troops also stormed a field hospital and detained 37 of the wounded receiving treatment. Meanwhile, Yemeni warplanes have launched airstrikes in the coastal city of Zinjibar, which was recently seized by Islamic militants. Opposition leaders have accused President Ali Abdullah Saleh of deliberately allowing Zinjibar Jabbar to fall to militants to try to show how chaotic Yemen would be without him. NATO warplanes have resumed bombing the Libyan capital of Tripoli just hours after South African President Jacob Zuma said Muammar Gaddafi would agree to a ceasefire but would not step down. Meanwhile, Al Jazeera has aired footage of armed Westerners on the front line with Libyan rebels near Misrata. The Guardian newspaper reports the video is the first apparent confirmation that foreign special forces are playing an active role in the Libyan conflict. The Western troop presence may be in defiance of the U.N. security resolution approved in March. That specifically excludes, quote, a foreign occupation force of any form on any part of Libyan territory. In related news, eight senior Libyan military officers appeared in Rome Monday to announce that they had defected from Gaddafi's forces. 
The prominent Egyptian blogger and activist Hassam al Hamalawi has been ordered to appear before Egyptian military prosecutors today for criticizing the human rights record of the Supreme Council of the Armed Forces. The host of a popular TV show has also been summoned for questioning. On Friday, tens of thousands of Egyptian protesters rallied in Tahrir Square, calling on the Supreme Council to end military trials and lift the emergency law. In other news from the region, Egypt has reopened the Rafah border crossing with the Gaza Strip, partially ending Israel's siege in Gaza. Most of Gaza's one and a half million residents have been barred from going abroad since the imposition of the blockade in 2007. Meanwhile, rallies are being held in Turkey today, marking a year since Israeli troops killed nine Turkish activists aboard a flotilla carrying humanitarian aid to Gaza. A prominent Pakistani journalist has vanished just days after he wrote an article alleging links between Pakistani Navy officials and al-Qaeda. Saeed Salim Shahzad, the Pakistan bureau chief for Asia Times Online, disappeared Sunday. There have been reports he may be in custody of the ISI, Pakistan's intelligence agency. A new report from Oxfam warns global food prices will more than double by 2030 as the planet enters an era of so-called permanent food crisis. The world's poorest communities are expected to be hit the hardest with international prices for staple foods, such as corn, rising by as much as 180 percent. In news from Haiti, a controversial report commissioned by the U.S. government has concluded the death toll from last year's earthquake may be far lower than originally projected. The Haitian government says 316,000 people died in the quake, but a new draft study by the U.S. Agency for International Development puts the death toll at between 46,000 and 85,000. USAID has yet to publish the study or share its findings with Haitian officials. And the legendary poet and musician Gil Scott Heron has died at the age of 62. Best known for his piece, The Revolution Will Not Be Televised, Gil Scott Heron was considered by many to be the father of hip-hop. Chuck D. of Public Enemy said last year, quote, you can go into Ginsburg and the beat poets and Dylan, but Gil Scott Heron is the manifestation of the modern word. He and the last poet set the stage for everyone else. And those are some of the headlines. This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman.